Can I help you? What is this thing? What, the interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. Well, I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm going to go with thank you. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. It's not actually about that, but he liked it. Oh, hello, dear. I didn't notice you at first. That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. But you have more important things to worry about. Oh, yes. A zoologist. A crypto-zoologist, to be more precise. It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. She's used to playing off such insults casually, but they still affect her. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology. One specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Searching for such species called cryptids is difficult and often thankless. And frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. Sometimes the most charming thing you can do is be reasonable in your requests. I suppose you could use a break and I could use a distraction. One cryptid, like you said, one. This can't turn into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. We have things to do. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. Cryptids, cryptids. Let's hear about all the interesting cryptids. Ooh, tough choice there. Cryobacter catlensis. Yes, a unicellular bacterium that was discovered in one of the northernmost points of Kotla on the Boreal Plateau by renowned geologist Caitlin Mijanu some 70 years ago. The bacterial colony Mijanu found had remained alive while frozen in ice for longer than anyone could reliably estimate. Certainly from before recorded history, Mijanu disappeared shortly after injecting herself with the bacteria she had brought back to study. No doubt in hopes of prolonging her own life. Mm-hmm. Mijanu did talk about the end of the world a great deal before her abrupt departure. Everyone thought the bacteria had driven her mad, but she really was a brilliant woman. Maybe. Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. The lieutenant pauses thoughtfully. Something in him breaks. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's have more cryptids. Well, the biggest cryptid is, of course, the horrible giant of Kokonur. The giant lives in the most arid parts of the vast Kokonur desert, 
in South Samara, casting a strange light across the barren wastes. The towering luminosity of Kokonur is a bad omen in local folklore. Some say it's a Fata Morgana, others, fate unimaginable. No one knows for sure. It is like an awful mountain appearing from below the horizon and expanding to cover almost a third of your field of vision. Pui. No animal can be that large. It's a mirage. That's what makes it so peculiar. A species surviving at the very limits of scientific law. The giant of Kokonur must be the largest animal the planet can support. There are limits, you see, to how large a metabolism an ecosystem can beget. Some say a gravity anomaly below the Kokonur desert might allow the creature to grow to these gargantuan sizes. The gnome of Jeroma. Oh, yes. None of its victims survived. Grieving relatives never even found their bodies because the gnome's venom dissolved organic tissue. It was, reportedly, a small creature with webbed fingers and a protruding forehead and a gangly little thing. Quite scary to look at. A couple of campers found it when it was already dying. They heard an odd wailing in the woods and followed the sound. They were scared and wrapped it in tarpaulin to suffocate it. It still took the gnome of Jeroma an entire day to die. If the body of the creature was found, why aren't there detailed illustrations of it in science textbooks, confirming the existence of this very little species? Alas, the first scientist who got his hands on the creature's corpse put it in a jar of formaldehyde, thinking that would detoxify the gnome's venom. Instead, all the venom leaked out of the creature's teeth and into the surrounding liquid, dissolving the creature itself. A poetic end, perhaps, but a real loss for science. What an interesting question. And the answer is, yes, there are. Of course. All fairy tales have someone or something invisible in them. Okay, I won't spoil your fun. What is the invisible cryptid? It's the Col de Mama d'Aqua. Its name means thin whisper of sound, and that's precisely what it is. Self-replicating sound waves, invisible and intangible. The Col de Mama is very afraid of us, which makes it incredibly difficult to track. That is a sad story. A group of university students assisting with the field work in their enthusiasm for the project, and no doubt because they were preoccupied with impressing their professors, nearly drove it to extinction. They tried to communicate with it and had no other means but sound. So they started sending out sound waves at frequencies they thought might match the Mama Dakwas. This lady really should be a teacher. She's really good at the explaining things thing. No, dear. They cancel each other out. And these tests were performed so recklessly that when they happened upon the right frequency, well, they wiped out most of the population. After that, the corpuscle appears to have migrated elsewhere. There have been recordings of anomalies similar to those spotted in Ea, but they've been few and far between. It's impossible to confirm the presence of any stable Kaltamama Dakwa population anywhere. Of course. A common thread in these. Disappearance and unfalsifiability. I like the story, though, ma'am. I'm glad you did, dear. Plenty. It's the evidence that led to its discovery. 
In the 20s, a group of aerial pagi ornithologists, that is, scientists who study birds, were trying out a new recording technology for capturing sounds outside the range of human hearing when playing back recordings they had made in the foothills of the Ea mountain range, they noticed certain anomalies, patterns that seemed random at first, but on closer examination were consistent with the waveforms of songbirds. The scientists soon discovered they could track and even predict what appeared to be feeding mating and migration patterns based on sound waves in a strictly delimited range of ultrasonic frequencies, even higher than those of the highest pitched bat calls. She transforms, when speaking about these strange animals, into a confident woman. They realized that they had discovered a new species and called it the Col de Mama d'Aqua, after the Paracanassian name for the Voice of God which is said to be very silent. They grew quite obsessed with these little birds, even began to name some of them. Sequester, Time, Joss Can, those are but some of the Mamadakwa they followed individually. Like nothing, it's such a high-pitched sound that us humans can't hear it, nor can other animals. It could be ringing right outside your window and you wouldn't even know it. Could be anywhere. Everywhere, even. Fine, I'll bite. How can an animal be a sound? Many scientists have asked the same question. Some have claimed that it isn't itself a sound, but a tiny corpuscle that emits sound waves. But there's no evidence to support this theory. It could be. As I said, it could be everywhere. And we wouldn't know any better. It could be ringing all the days of our lives and nights. Maybe it's predatory. It's not. Don't worry. If it were predatory, we would have found it by the damage it inflicts. I wouldn't be so sure. What if the damage is also invisible? What about what? Of course, dear. Just a moment, officer. If you run into my husband again, do tell him I'm worried and to hurry back. Do it. Who knows what cryptozoological mysteries will be uncovered. Oh, thank you so much, sweetie. Good luck with your investigation now. <laughs>